Welcome to the Harper Classroom series of instructional videos. This video is on linear programming, transportation with Excel, part one. In this video, I'll consider the transportation problem and in the problem solving approach, I'll define the problem, formulate it, and then solve it with Excel with a solver add-in. So let's consider the problem and set it up. Assume we have a company that's shipping computers from two warehouses, Warehouse A in Denver, Colorado, and Warehouse B in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, Warehouse A here has 1,000 computers to ship. Warehouse B here has 2,000. They're shipping to three customer sites, one, two, and three, Seattle, Washington, Albany, New York, and Dallas, Texas. And each of these three sites, they have required demand, 500, 1,500, 1,000. So if I have one large shipment from A to 1, from Denver to Seattle, from A to 1, then on the average my unit shipping cost would be $15 per computer. But the same shipment from Denver all the way to Albany, New York, from A to 2, would be $30 per computer. Which leads me to my business question. How many do I ship from A and B to 1, 2, and 3, so I do not exceed my capacity, I meet my demand, and minimize my shipping cost. That's the transportation LP. So, let's solve it with Excel, but before we do, let's formulate it. In the formulation, remember we first define our decision variables. Let IJ be the number shipped from source I to destination J, where I is A and B, and J is 1, 2, and 3. So A1, that variable represents how many is shipped from source A to destination 1. Well, the cost is 15. So 15 times A1 is the shipping cost. Likewise, 30A2, 20A3, and 2025-15, B1, B2, B3. I add all those together. That's my shipping cost. I want to minimize my total shipping cost. Notice I have six variables, not two variables. So this is in six dimensions. Next is my constraint set. First, I have my two capacity constraints. Well, source A, everything that source A ships cannot exceed its capacity of 1,000. But everything that A ships is going to destinations either 1, 2, or 3. So A1 plus A2 plus A3 is everything that A is going to ship. That must be less than its capacity. Likewise, everything that B ships must be less than its capacity of 2,000. Those are my capacity constraints. Next, my demand constraints. Well, customer destination 1 has a demand of 500. But everything 1 receives is coming from either A or B. So A1 plus B1 is everything that 1 receives. That must at least equal its required demand of 500. Likewise, destination 2 is 1,500. Destination 3 is 1,000. Those are my demand constraints. Finally, notice I have shorthand to represent my non-negativity constraints, and there's six of them. So this represents six different constraints. Each one is a non-negativity constraint on my decision variable. So this is the formulation. Now let's solve it with Excel. So let's bring in Excel. I've already typed in the problem in the table above, and I typed in the headings in the solution table below. Now in the solution table, these six cells right here will be my shipping schedule. These will be my decision variables. That's how many will be shipped from the warehouses to the destinations. So first, let's set this up. So we sum everything that warehouse A ships, and there's the shipped amount. I copy that down, and that's how much A and B will ship. Over here, I sum everything that one receives. And I copy that over. So this is all the receivables of destinations 1, 2, and 3. Next is my total cost. That's the sum product of my unit shipping costs, comma, times my decision variables. So this is how much it costs to ship per unit times how many units I'm shipping. So that's my total cost. So now let's go to solver. I come up my data tab, come over to solver. My set objective, my objective function is my total cost, that cell right there. 
and up here I want to minimize by changing variable cells. This is my decision variables. That's these six cells right here. Constraints. Add. Well, first I want my capacity constraints. Everything that A and B ships on the left-hand side is less than or equal to my constant, which is my capacity. And notice I combined uh, F8 and F9 and F3 and F4, and they match up. Add. Now my demand constraints. Everything that 1, 2, and 3 receives must be greater than or equal to the required demand. Press OK. So there's my two constraints. Make sure uh, make the unconstrained variables non-negative. Make sure the selection, the solving method is uh, simplex. Then I solve it. Solver found a solution. All constraints optimality conditions are satisfied. Keep solver solution. So there it is. And there's my shipping schedule. A will ship 500 to 1 and 500 to 3. B ships 1500 to 2 and 500 to 3. So there's my shipping schedule. Now my minimum cost is $62,500 or 62.5K. So let's come up here. Let's highlight that because that's going to be important. So let's remember that. 62.5K. Now let's go a little deeper. So let's go back to Solver, Data tab, Solver, and solve it. And on the Solver results here, over here on the right, we have Reports. Let's look at the Sensitivity Report. Now when I click OK, it's going to give another, another spreadsheet down here with a Sensitivity Report. OK, and there it is. So let's click the Sensitivity Report and let's enlarge this. So now we can see it a little better, and I'm going to focus on the cells, the names, the final values, this is the value of the decision variables, 500, A1 is 500, A2, A3, B1, 2, and 3, but also the reduced cost. Now, when a variable is positive, that variable, A1, is called a basic variable. A non-basic variable will always have a value of 0, so A2 is non-basic, B1 is non-basic. Now, the reduced cost apply to a non-basic variable. Let's look at B1. So for B1, the reduced cost is 10. What that means is, is that I'm at an optimal solution where B1 equals 0. If I change that 0, then I'm going to change the objective function by 10. In other words, I f if I force that to be a 1, every unit change, my objective function changes by 10. Since I'm at a minimum, it's going to increase by 10. Well, let's see how that works. Let's go back to Solver. And now let me add a constraint. Now remember we're talking about uh, B1 here. So I'm going to click that and we'll say I'm going to add a constraint where that cell is going to be greater than or equal to, and let me put a 1 in there. Okay. So now I'm saying, well, that has to be at least a 1. So I'm moving away from 0, away from optimality. Well, the reduced cost says that this should increase by 10. So when I say solve, sure enough, it increases by, there's a 1, and this increases by 10. So let's go back to the sensitivity report. Let's come up here and look at the other non-basic variable, A2. Well, what this says is that for A2, as this non-basic variable increases, my objective function will change by 0. In other words, it will not change. Well, let's look at A2. Let's come back to Solver. Let's take this away and delete this. Now, let's add the constraint where I'm forcing A2 here. There's my A2 variable. I'm forcing that to be greater than or equal to 1. So now, let's solve it. And sure enough, these four did change. It's a different uh, shipping schedule. But the minimum cost is still, still $62,500. So what this illustrates is now I have two different shipping schedules with the same minimum cost, which implies multiple solutions. So the transportation LP is well known for multiple solutions. So there's more than one way to ship these items to achieve minimum cost. Well, I only changed this by one 
Can I change it more? 2, 3, 4, 10. Yes, I can. Well, to make that change easy, let me automate this. Let me say a2 increase equals, and then let me put this number 1 here. Now let's come back to solver. I'm just going to automate this change. I go back to this constraint, change it. Now instead of just putting a 1 in there, the right hand side I'm going to make it that cell. So now instead of putting numbers in here, I can just put a number in the cell. So right now I have um, noticed uh, that it looked like this went from 500 down to 499. This went from 1500 down to 1499, and this went up. So these two cells go up, and these two cells go down. So if I change this to a 2, then I should see the same thing. And sure enough, this went down 2, and these went up 2. Well, how much can I go up? Well, when this starts decreasing, it can't go below 0. So I've already gone down 2, so what's the maximum this can decrease? Well, 500. So I've put 500 here, and then solve it. Sure enough, I still have my minimum cost, and I have a different shipping schedule, but that goes down to 0. Well, let's see what happens. Let's go back to solver for this solution, solve it, and now let's go to the shipping, to the sensitivity report. And this will give us a sensitive report number 2 on this other solution. Okay. When I go to sensitive re sensitivity report number two, let me increase this, enlarge this again. Notice this time my non-basic variables, my non-basic variable with a zero reduced cost is going to be A3. So that moves over to A3 then. Well if I increase A3 then basically it's going to go back to the other one. So there's two different extreme points that this is moving toward. A2 here can range between 0 and 500. Go back on the next page here. What I did here, solution 1 is the one we started with, then I went A2 went all the way to 500, and that's the one I ended with. Now between A2 can go from 0 to 500, so I can have many different solutions here between 0 and 500. Well, I picked one, 250, halfway between. But I've already demonstrated that this can be 0 to 500 in increments of 1, increments of 10. So theoretically, I could have non-integer values. But the point is, I can have multiple shipping schedules to achieve the same minimum cost of $62,500. With this ends the video on linear programming transportation with Excel, part 1. Now part 2 will go even deeper. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.